the hell is Nick Carlson? So what's this video about again? It's an author video. It's like a promotional thing. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who are you doing it on exactly? Me. You. I'm the author. You? Yes, me. Uh, well, why, do you, why do you think I dragged you all out here at the butt crack at dawn? Is it because you value our company and enjoy our friendship? <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, you know, I'm just going to be in my element doing my thing and you're going to follow me around and uh, ask me questions, okay? What kinds of questions? Um, I mean, just ba basic stuff like, you know, you know, wh wh what's your background, you know, what what's your life story, that kind of thing. Okay, should, um, should we start now? Yeah, as long, as long as the camera's out, we'll start now. Cool, so, Nick, let's begin with your background. Tell us a little bit about your life story. Man, you're a nosy son of a bitch. So, a little about me. My name is Nick Carlson. I graduated from Florida State University in 2019 with a degree in digital media productions. So, my trade is uh, video editing and videography. Um, I launched my writing career in 2020 with a self-published novel, and right now I am a contributing author for the horror entertainment site Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. Apart from writing, I'm also an animal lover, even when the animals don't love me back. I'm also an avid fisherman and a musician. I'm, right now I'm learning the church organ, and you have my idol Davy Jones to thank for that. The singer from the monkeys? No, 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 the, 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 the squid face from Pirates. Oh. Why is he your idol? Well, uh, well, maybe I didn't quite mean it like that. You idolize him? No, I don't idolize him. I, I just think that he's a underrated villain and a great cinematic figure in general. That's all. I think you just like me. Shut the fuck. Tell us about the voices in your head. Huh? What kind of question is that? Like, why'd you... Why'd you decide to write a novel? Like, why do you consider this your life's purpose? What drove you to write? Are you accusing me of something? Is this what's going on? No. It's that's what it sounds like. Just answer the question. What? Why? 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 Is it, are you like? Are you, are you like testing me? What's going on? This is your video. Well, I know, but like, but like, I didn't expect it to go this deep. Like, why do I write? Like, what? What does that mean? Does, am I supposed to be doing something else? What? It's just your story what drove you to write. Don't overthink it. Overthinking it uh, is exactly what I intend not to do. It'll be fine. I'm a tree. How'd you get over there? Uh, trees don't talk. Nick, you're not a tree. Fine. Your parents are looking okay. for you. Uh, I, I, I may not be a tree, but what am I? Because clearly, there's now been doubt that's been cast as to whether or not I should be a writer. What am I, what am I supposed to be doing with my life, huh? Is this my purpose? Am I living someone else's fantasy? I mean, what, what's going on? What kind of question is that? Why are they doing this to me? All I want to do is write a book for God's sake. No one's saying you can't write a book. Huh? Just write. You wrote. You're good. We ain't got a problem. The only one that's got a problem is you. Are you saying that I'm responsible for what I do? Yes. Oh. Okay, then. Well, I think to answer this question, it's good to look at storytelling in general. Let, let's go back a little bit. How far back? Let's start at the beginning. Billions of years ago, all matter in the universe was condensed to a single point. But in all seriousness, um, storytelling really has been in our blood since the dawn of man. Tens of thousands of years ago, some hominid smeared ash on his palm and left a handprint on a cave wall. And he might not have had the words to describe why he did it, but he wanted to send a message. Um, this is me. Um, I was here. And in the tens of thousands of years since, so much has changed about storytelling. And yet, a lot's remained the same. Storytelling is the way we as a species uh, convey information, or send messages, or um, interpret the spirit of the times. It only serves that storytelling from the epic to the mundane would um, be appropriate to help us uh, get inspired to become enraptured. 
and just get that motivation to do more of their lives, not just exist in this world. As for me personally, uh, storytelling's been in my blood since the dawn of, well, me. Even back, remembering back to when I was four years old on camping trips, my dad would be telling us uh, ghost stories about the hunter in the woods who got killed by a bear and the bear tore out his liver. So now the hunter's ghost wanders the woods just kind of muttering, give me my liver. You know, real wholesome stuff. And he always seemed to tell it no matter where we were camping, which just goes to show how many liverless dead guys were really haunting uh, North Georgia. So yeah, storytelling's been there the whole time, but I mean, what led to me choosing writing is my medium of choice. Gosh, if I'm really new. Well, I've thought really long and hard about this, but I think the answer comes back to uh, Calvin and Hobbes. That newspaper comic with the tiger? Yeah, that's the one. I started getting into it when I was six, and um, six-year-old me was uh, too young to, uh, to appreciate the nuance and the vocabulary behind it all, but I stuck with it anyway because um, the, uh, the artwork was good, the slapstick was hilarious, um, all the expressions were very, uh, this way. All the expressions were very uh, comical and exaggerated. That, that's really appealing to a little kid, even if he doesn't understand what's being said. And as I grew up, you know, starting to learn, you know, more, more words, starting to appreciate the dialogue more, I saw just how, you know, dialogue could be structured and paced to complement a visual, a very strong visual. And that just translated over to writing where you have to use words to uh, craft up an image for the reader to see. Thanks to Calvin and Hobbes, um, my writing always seems to have like a humorous streak, even at its uh, most bleak. A humorous streak you'll eventually see in Hell's Gulf. Oh, look at all the crowds. You see him? Zoom in. Oh, Zoom Jesus. In. It's like a... Uh... It's like a dungeon. Because, you know, dungeonous crap. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, Nick. Why inflict this horror upon the world? Well, for one, it's fun to scare people. <clears throat> Whoa. Look at them, they're like little cockroaches. Ugh. Little mud crab. Here, you want it? No. Take it. No, I'm good. Take it! Uh, I'm real good. But I believe horror is one of the most versatile and time-tested literary genres out there. Reason being is that with horror, you aim to displease. Take it, it wants you! It is your goal to elicit discomfort in the reader and force them to reconcile with the darkest places life has to offer. The evils of man, the sins of the past, the coldness of nature, the threat of the other, the list goes on and on. Amidst the suffering, the trial by fire, when the ships are down, the masks come off and things are revealed for what they truly are. Writers have used horror in the past to cope with things or to convey messages or to warn others. Times of hardship force us to ask why things are the way they are and why we react to them in certain ways. And I believe that horror is a very fun and effective way of conveying that eternal truth. I'm glad he's not looking in our direction. Uh, he, oh, he knows we're here, that's for sure. He knows exactly what we're doing. He's just waiting for us to make the next move. Uh, yeah, Alright, let's go. So what is this monstrosity about? Well, first and foremost, Hell's Gulf is a coming-of-age story. Our protagonist, Rowan Vane, is 20 years old, yet he still has a lot of growing up to do. Because let's face it, even when you leave your teenage years, there's still a lot to learn, a lot about you that's uh, ripe for change. And I haven't seen too many movies, or coming-of-age stories, rather, that deal with uh, anything outside uh, pre-teens or adolescence. So I thought that maybe it'd be, it'd be interesting to explore the, um, the sort of problems that a young man might be facing at that age. Questions like, um, what makes a man? What am I doing with my life? Changing myself versus changing the world. That sort of stuff. And let's face it, these are stuff that even grown adults still grapple with. These themes, in my opinion, are very timely and relatable, and it was very interesting mulling them over while writing Hell's Gulf. The greater themes in Hell's Gulf are interwoven throughout this setting I've concocted. A sun-soaked, briny, rural beach town with colorful locals and demons lurking in the shadows. Rowan Vane is trying to find something he thinks he's been missing throughout his whole life. Definition. Up until this point, his creative writing ambitions have been uh, rather flat and uninspired thanks to his um, lackluster social life and his um, sheltered upbringing. Will Rowan find what he's looking for? Perhaps, if he can first deal with the town's nightmarish creatures, square away the town's bloody history, and suffer through the worst trial man can endure. Romance. This sounds like an autobiography. Well, even the most fictitious of fiction contains elements of truth. 
So everything you said is somewhat based on reality? I mean, sure, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. So you're writing suck until you got lost in the woods and gargled swamp water or something like that, right? Well, that's not quite what I did. And that implies that you too are a romantic disaster, yes? You know what, this video is over. You guys are assholes. Fuck you. Wait, wait, wait! Come, Come back! What possessed you to write such a thing? Really, there are two reasons I wrote Hell's Gulf. Firstly, as a horror fan, I enjoy a good scare. And I enjoy the reward and the challenge of getting through a particularly taxing read. My first novel, which I self-published, was similarly self-serious and bleak. I still enjoy the story, but as I've grown as a writer, I've come to realize it simply wasn't the kind of novel that I wanted to write. You'll notice as you read Hell's Gulf that amid the, the darkness and the heavy undertones, there are comedic moments, there are absurd moments, there are moments of fantasy and scenic splendor. I took writing Hell's Gulf as an excuse to throw on the lights, to really let the colors run forth and spell out all over the pages. And the dark fantasy element enabled me to go wild and let loose with uh, some truly, truly like ludicrous dialogue and imaginative scenarios. I enjoy writing in general, but I had a lot of fun writing Hell's Gulf. And it is my hope that my readers have fun with it too. The second reason is I wanted to pay tribute to all the places I visited while I was down at college. I was never much of a party animal, nor did late nights in the town interest me. So instead I took day trips to all these strange, wonderful places. Um, the Apalachicola National Forest, um, St. Mark's Wildlife Refuge, Alligator Point, Masha Sands. The region is known as Florida's Forgotten Coast. They certainly aren't the most visually appealing or refined places in Florida, but there's a certain primordial, untapped beauty about them that I truly think is special. All the twisted angles, all the primitive, subdued colors, how unabashedly like natural it is. Words really can't describe this feeling, but if you ever get the privilege of coming down here yourself, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And it wasn't just the settings, even people I met and encounters I had at these places directly make their way into my novel. That just goes to show the influence my travels had on me. I truly could not have written House Gulf without them. Nick, can we go home now? Yeah, it's been like three days. No, it hasn't. It's been... Wow, who knew spending 57 hours following Nick around the Forgotten Coast would work on such an appetite? Well, it wasn't three days, so there's that. My car has been in the shop this entire time. Now, I'm pretty sure there was a funeral I was supposed to attend. Well, I'm sure the deceased won't mind. I'm just personally glad this video is over with. And in exchange for our kindness, Nick is going to pay for our meal, right? God damn it.